Awesome. I should all get a recording request coming through. Got it. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Kia ora, everybody. Um, welcome to our first edition of Passes of Knowledge for 2021. Tony, how are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. It's been a good start to the year. Yeah, why has it been good? What's been happening? Um, so over the New Year's break, we got four days off work, including stat days. So I was able to go over to the west coast of the South Island. So I went to Westport New Year's Eve to see my brother and catch up with him, which was good. And then headed up to Golden Bay for three days. So that was real good just to get away, get away from messages, you know, uni work and all that kind of stuff and just actually do something for myself, which I probably don't do enough. Oh, brilliant. So tell us, while you're away, what did you, what knowledge did you put into your basket over your time while you were in this world of Zen, I guess? I think what I learned was it's good to step away and it's good to just, you know, put things down without feeling guilty about it. You know, I always feel guilty anytime I put something down or I'm not doing something for, you know, what I'm striving to do, but it actually helps you to be a better you. And that's yep. what we don't recognize. We often think, you know, oh, I'm guilty, you know, oh, I'm not helping people, oh, I'm not replying to that message or email. But in reality, you know, it's only, it's a small thing, but it's what you need to keep you going and keep you driving. So that's really important when you, you know, go through anything. And that's true. You know, it goes back to the old cliche that we always hear about the whole um, when you're in a plane, you've got to fill up your own oxygen before you fill up others. So it's important for you to actually do that. You know, otherwise you can't help anyone else. So it's awesome that you have um, have done that. What have I, what have, what have I done? Um, not much, I guess. Just lots of reading. And like I said, just downtime is pretty important because um, like you said, you just get so busy helping other people that you just um, end up not looking after yourself. So what does that mean? That means zero work. Don't even turn on my phone, my work phone. Don't even turn on my work email. <sighs> Crazy. Um, but it's pretty good. It's pretty awesome. So yeah, you got to look after yourself. And that's without feeling guilty. And that's pretty cool. Um, so as always, that's enough of us rambling on and on because we could do that forever. Um, for our first podcast, for those of you that are our, um, the, our subscribers that have been with us for a long time um, thank you for joining us again and you'll notice a bit of a different format today hopefully this works out we're going to use a video format and see how that goes and for our very very first video format for 2021 we have an, another fantastic guest as always our guests are amazing but we thought that we'd start off the year with a bang and um, today our guest is um, a pretty awesome inspiring person and um, we know she's going to do some pretty cool things not just with what the role is, but in her life, and she'll tell us about them in a bit. Um, welcome to our podcast, Melissa. Awesome. Malo lele. Uh, kia ora tato katoa. Thank you for having me, guys. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa, for giving us your time for today. Melissa, be, to get started, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, who is Melissa, and what is she doing at the moment in her world? And then we'll get into your, your story. Cool, cool. So um, who is Melissa Lama? I often ask myself this actually quite often, but um, so I'm, I'm a proud mother of, of two boys, ages um, nine and seven, um, born in, in Auckland, raised in Christchurch, um, but have been living in Dunedin for the last four years. Uh, since all the study, uh, I am an you know, only daughter in a house full of boys. Um, oh, wow. And then now with our, me and my brothers having children, we now only have one girl and nine boys. So oh, wow. it's a very uh, male dominant um, family, which can kind of explain a bit of my attitude um, with my ruthlessness sometimes, which mum said is not the best, but um, no, I, I love it. And um, if anything, uh, I'd say community, culture, um, and is, is the biggest drivers behind my purpose for sure. Um, yeah, so that's that's me. Yeah. That's that awesome. That's that's you in a nutshell, right? The community and culture. How awesome! And living with all those all those male figures, it must be interesting. Yeah. But I'm sure it doesn't intimidate you at all. I mean, hey, you got, you got ruthless, right? Yeah, no, these boys are uh, actually. I'm probably the one that's really in their face. So they're they're quite oh. quiet. The opposite of me, oh, quiet. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the the really loud one. <laughs> oh, poor poor brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> awesome. Um, so this is where you are. Though. Let's talk about where where you started from. And you know, in our podcast, we like to talk about people's journeys. And you know, um, I had a little brief read of the stuff you sent me, which is fantastic. And if we take it back to where you started from, so let's talk about you at high school, mm. and you know, yeah, how was how was your final year of high school? What what is that like for you? 
Wow. Um, so I was started at a school here in Christchurch, just down the road called Kashmir High. Yep. Um, went there for the first four years, uh, four and a bit years, and then I got a scholarship, actually four years, then I got a scholarship over to St Margaret's College, awesome. uh, which is an orphan female school for sports. So believe it or not, my life was um, pursued by sport, travelled country, travelled overseas. Yeah. Um, what sport was that? What's yeah, cool? so athletics, uh, volleyball, netball, um, and basketball. So oh, it wow. was tough trying to balance all four. Did a little bit of rowing for a while, for a bit, yeah. and um, it just really put myself out there. Um, oh, so wow. I went to in in the process of high school, but uh, unfortunately, being uh, athletically talented didn't necessarily mean that I was really good in classrooms. Uh, so I struggled a lot with learning. Um, yeah. Part of that was my own insecurities around. Not being intelligent enough and people celebrated me for my loud uh cheerful and um somewhat sports talents yeah um but behind all that i was actually struggling i completely did not enjoy going to class um and if i had an event that meant i missed school it was like the best day ever um yeah but it was also so that, that, that's pretty sure that you that you said that because you know a lot of people think that when you are successful and you seem confident outwardly actually internally there's a whole different battle going on yeah, and I'm still the same today. Um, yeah. Even though I'm finishing off my masters and, and looking at a PhD, I'm, I still get very insecure about what people think about my academic work. So yeah. everything I submit takes ages because I constantly go back and check, yeah. and I have to get validation of people. It's really it's crazy. You wouldn't think I was like that, but I am. It's it's my um, internal battle that I still I still quite go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's it's always um there's what there's two things here. It's one to be aware of it, and two to actually acknowledge it out there because mm. I think a lot a lot of people are not aware of it, or they hide it. And if when they become aware, they don't acknowledge it. They just they just use the confidence side to go, hey, I'm still a good athlete. So I don't have to worry about that. Whereas you go actually wait a minute. If I, if I address it, then I become a better person for yourself. That's right. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. And um, leaving high school, stay till year 13, but yep. unfortunately left with uh, NCA level one yep. um, in year 13. And um, high school was interesting for me because the following year in January, I got married. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I was only um, 17, yeah. got married um, to a really lovely, uh, quiet um, Maori Scottish Muslim man. Oh, yeah. um, uh, who is the father of my two boys and, and fantastic yeah. what, what 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 a clash of cultures there so you have your pacific oh. culture then you have a maori culture plus plus islam i mean how is that that yeah that would have been he a was, pretty... he's adopted by uh Samoan, so he's oh, wow. quite immersed in um uh, Samoan as well which is yeah. a whole new <laughs> new layer of culture but that, that's amazing that, yeah. that's both amazing also quite frightening in, in terms of the world we live in you know where um where a clash of all those cultures becomes oh what's going on in terms of some people's eyes yeah yeah no um it's been a um a good learning experience for myself but also everybody else in my village and those around me yeah because um we all have to chip in with this whole diversity and inclusion journey uh which is still something we're all going through now i have yeah. a very uh, conservative christian family yeah. um, and then i have two uh tongan maori scottish children who are muslim yeah. so um I think you can imagine what it's like on, on Christmas and Sundays, um, yeah. <laughs> but we, we work through it. It's an, as uncomfortable as it is, guys, like it's uncomfortable. I just go through it. Yeah. yeah and, and, that's, and that's the world you live in, right? That's your world. Yeah. You, you're acknowledging, all right, cool. This is my world. And this is what we've got to, got to address. Yeah. So you, you met this, you've married this, this wonderful young person. This one, yeah. I'm going to say young, cause you're young at that time there. You're, not yeah, young, but, you're, and you're still young. Good. You're still young. What are you talking about? Um, yeah. So you're, Obviously, your, that that changed your world trajectory a little bit. So you were this oh. amazing athlete, got married. Then what happened for you in your world? Oh man! So um, got married. It was uh, just about me now growing up, right? So leaving yeah. my mum's my mum's care with my brothers and and moving in with him. And um, it was uh, at that time I thought, oh, I've got this. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I'm like, man, I, I thought at that point that I had it all sorted, you know, and I was going to be fine. Um, you know, I'm 17, but like I'm, I'm mature. And so what that meant was um, I had to grow up real quick. And a year later, I had my oldest son, Amoni, who okay. is nine, turning 10. Yeah. So um, we've been married for what? Uh, just under 11 years. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Two, yeah. 28 at the moment. Um, and my whole life changed in the sense that um, I had to think for myself um, and 
my whole um, role in the family as the only female sister and stuff sort of changed a bit yeah. uh, because what I should have done was stay at home for my mum uh, but instead I decided to, to to grow up real quick and so uh, they also mean I missed 21st birthdays traditional 21st birthday is a huge in Tongan culture yeah. um, I married outside of the religion that we grew up in side of the, the the race that I'm supposed to be uh, very into and so I did all the things that uh, my parents didn't want for me to do um, yeah. they had dreams and hopes I was going to go far in sport um, and then uh, you know that didn't quite happen so yeah. at the time I thought it's all about me uh, but I think what I didn't realize was the consequences of of not doing the things I was sort of uh, hyped up and encouraged to do growing up so realizing that now my my um, journey from 18 years forward was going to be young mum um, yeah. doesn't even have UE entrance I didn't actually know what I was doing it was a bit of a downhill spiral for a yeah. wee while there um, and I think that's where a lot of the growth happened and then trying to grow up as a teenager while being married with a kid yeah. don't recommend it guys <laughs> don't recommend it you had a share yeah. you had a share yeah Oh man, um, but yeah, that that was sort of me for a while. I uh, had quite bad uh, postnatal depression, yeah. which eventually uh, led to uh, quite you know depression where I was medicated for a few years, yeah. um, went in and out of hospital. So it was it was a it was a journey from from eighteen onwards, um, and yeah. part of that was just I think uh, me not accepting the decisions I made. Like I didn't yeah. back myself up. I kind of yeah. was made this decision to to get married and be a mum and then um sort of look for everyone for validation and hearing community members talk about me like uh, that comes with me and be like your life's over like you're selfish what you did to your mum and yeah. she worked so hard to pay your trips it was it was constantly in my face and I thought you deserve that you know so I let that yeah. I let that bother me um and so it was kind of just all the external stuff when I should have just being strong within myself, yeah. Yeah, but it's hard, you know, you're 17 or 18 and it's very hard to, to, to see that, you know, like oh, you said, totally. you know, at that, that age and, you know, I remember myself when you're 17 or 18, you're worried about what other people think and even though you're bulletproof, even though you're bulletproof for, for what the way you think about, you can actually wait a minute, they're saying things about this, about me and it affects you. And, you know, I was going to ask you about your mental health because that would have taken a huge toll in, in, yeah. in your world, not just because of the world you're living in, but because of all the other stuff around you. Yeah. Um, Oh man, I didn't even know it was post cell depression. It wasn't until um, one day it was raining and I kind of like was crying, crying on the street of a, of a place that we were living at, yeah. uh, up the east side of Christchurch. And this lady was walking with her dog and she was like, she said, sweetie, are you not cold? And I didn't realize it was raining and I was cold. Um, yeah. She said, why are you crying? And I said, oh, this, this baby's like too much for me. And then I sort of just, she didn't even ask about that part, but I told her about everything. Um, she said, have you ever considered uh, post-cell depression? And I was like, what, what's that? And so from that moment, I, I went back and decided to come and see a GP, which is really bad because friends did tell me, but it took a random lady walking a dog in the rain to be like, I think you've got post depression, you know, which I don't recommend that we go around diagnosing people. <laughs> but for that, for, the, for her to do that for me, definitely opened my eyes to what could have been going on for me. Um, it was a lot of a lot of tears, uh, a lot of trying to also educate my family at the same time, and also a lot of masking. Yeah. So as much as I was trying to educate them about why I was on meds or why I was unwell, I was also trying to mask the fact that I wasn't well. So yeah. constantly putting myself in this um, the state of of working hard, you know, to try and get people to think I'm all good. Um, yeah. yeah, and it just sort of spiral it keeps spiraling and i was like why are things not getting better yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's it's crazy you know that the that the words of a stranger sometimes has the most effect on on you versus versus yeah. people that are close to you you know um i'm sure both time and myself could think about random strangers would have said something to us that someone would have told us a million times but we don't listen to them but a stranger goes no 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 you're like oh that makes sense and yeah. it's it's so crazy and it's it's actually probably the best thing that happened to you at, while you were crying yeah. in the cold day. Oh. yeah Totally. And I'm usually scared of dogs. So the fact that I didn't run away from her was a good sign that it was meant to be. Um, yeah. yeah. So I've so, learned a lot. I still, I still um, go through uh, quite bad anxiety today and depression. In fact, my last one was during the NBA um, last year, near the end of the year. Because yeah. we present all the time and it's quite competitive. Yeah. Um, and it was a case study. I had a company from South Africa and I just was near the end of my presentation and I was happy about it. 
but then I felt this massive um, concern about what they were thinking. So I was trying to present, but also looking at everyone's face on Zoom. Yeah, I had to like switch it off, and um, my the rest of my team carried on, and I, I've never like oh I got up and I ran around like just to try and calm down because when I get like that, it's it's hard. You can tell something's not yeah. right. Yeah, especially when I go from smiling and laughing to like. What's, what's going on so um anxiety is still a huge one for me but um the depression stuff has been a, a lot more easy because i just speak when i'm yeah i'll talk about it yeah yeah which which is which i think is, is good for listeners to hear about that you know that it does happen it's not just gets better overnight it's something that that, that you go through and you work through and speaking is the best thing to help yeah Totally. And, and I, it's a good thing I do is I tell people like, oh, I don't necessarily need an answer from you. It's just, um, just be there, you know, to just listen. And then, and then I always make sure that if they don't have the capacity to listen, then that's all good as well. Yeah. Um, but I know speak, being able to speak up is a privilege during those times as well. So, um, yeah. just, just being mindful of everybody in this situation is something I encourage. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true. And I think that's important for you. That's a very important um, thing you've raised there because I know lots of young people, um, go through anxiety or anxious moments and they feel that they have to tell their best friend but sometimes your best friend is not the person because you they might not have the right capacity you've got to think about and in those states it's very hard to think about it but sometimes just talking to someone that you don't that's not your best friend is also a good thing that's right and it's that mutual space right so if you find yeah. someone that doesn't necessarily understand your whole situation uh then it kind of helps with um getting that sort of mutual advice you want to hear instead of yeah. Biased. So that, exactly biased. Yeah. Biased, yeah. yeah. Is, and then they don't tell you what you necessarily want to hear. Not yeah, the, the protect, yeah, that's right. They're protecting yeah. you, right? They're, or they're feeling right. their feelings, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah so yeah. um, I mean we could go down this 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 yeah, so. way. No, no, don't be sorry at all. This is amazing, it's fascinating. So let's let's go back. So here you are a young mom, you you've got a, you've going through a bit of depression there. Um, then what happened? So obviously we know that you didn't stay as you didn't stay crying on that on that. On that roadside, you picked yourself up, off you went, did your thing. So what, what was next for you? So you did that, and then so you... Worked at a rest home. Uh, so one thing during high school we did was, uh, was a bit of a struggle, obviously, financially growing up. So we uh, I had a job uh, at 15, which kind of got me in trouble a bit. So beyond the sport, the school, I was also working night shifts. And, oh, wow. Uh, the rest home here down the road that my mum still at for the last 22 years. Because if it was, I was either there, it was either there, or we had no money yep. to even send me on any trip. Uh, which means I would turn up to school half asleep, and and I don't, and I, don't, I am weary about saying it because I don't want my mom to look like a really bad person. But at the time, that's all we kind of could do. You got to survive, right? You have to survive. You got to, you've got to eat, and you've got to pay the bills, you know, and that's important. So um, yeah, from there, and then had the had my son, my first son, and then was still working at that rest home. And there was this virus going around. Um, this, this, there's always a story behind my mind. Viruses, mother. yeah. It was like a, um, oh, it's like a, a, always the virus where you could either vomit from. Gastro, a gastro. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it. So, what do you call it? Like, anyway. Um, and so I was helping someone out and then obviously I got mess all over me. Yep. And my mom was walking through the corridor. She heard me like sort of scream and like, Start crying, and she would open the door and see to be a dog. Like, why are you crying? And I said, I can't believe I'm here. Like, I'm only turning nineteen, and this is this is it. You know, yeah. I never, you know, you went from being celebrated by everyone for your talents to to being um vomited on. Yeah, just all an important yeah. role. Yeah. And, you know, no, no, um, not begging anyone who does that. And so she turned around and she's like, Why don't you go and study? I was like, I want to, but. We saw how they went with the NCA, like, you know, she's like, who cares? And this is my mum. And I was like, what yeah. do you mean? I'm not smart. And she's like, don't have to be smart. You can do whatever you want to do. Like, oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And I thought, man, like, where's this energy all the time, mum? But no, <laughs> she was like, she's like, no, just do, go and go to school. Like every Pacific parent, I'm sure a lot of parents as well, you know, they want their kids to try, right? 100%. Yeah, progress the situation. So I did, I waited till I was old enough and got adult entry. And that is why I talk awesome. about adult entry like it's better than you, we. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, nothing's better than each other. But no, I, I think adult entry was, was my, sort of the, the saver, the yeah. token of, for me to be able to just have another go at it. Yeah. But before you did that, you were doing some other cool things as well. Before you came to university, you were involved in some other 
<laughs> you just What's remind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I did, um, was a part of a as well at, before uni. Did a lot of community work. Yeah. Did, um, immunization coordinator at the specific trust Canterbury. Yeah. Uh, I worked as a transitional um, support person for education post earthquake. So before uni, I did actually have a lot of work experience in the yeah. public sector. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was through the mission of education and then did quite a bit of advocacy for immigration yep. um, oh, yep. um, overstayers so that's something i still do today um and so i think my whole life was about advocacy and about community because as a young mum you kind of go to seek supports and government agencies and they don't often um provide what you need and i think yep. that was the moment of like has to be better than this you know yep. Tough, yep. And be kind and that's kind of how i um got into this realm of youth politics uh through um specific youth leadership and transformation council called pilot yeah uh, which is a civics group uh, who does quite a bit of lobbying so i'm a board of trustee member there oh fantastic uh, so those are the sort of things like yes you're right come here i forgot that message yeah, exactly huge that's huge part of your life right there yeah because because you're taken from someone that's in a, in a rest home to someone coming to university and in between that and that you've done so much that that helped you grow and change your change yeah. the change your pathway just a little bit or actually not change direct your pathway through the advocacy yeah yeah i think um that, and that's how i get people involved they're like how are you so committed and passionate and i always tell them like think of think of one uh, policy or one um sort of law legislation that annoyed you the most or was unjust like didn't serve you or your family or yeah. wasn't um had so much inaction that you couldn't even access that policy that's how i get young people sort of yeah and, and so for me it was um trying to seek mental health support yeah uh, Old young mum, um, and that's yeah. So that's yeah. What, what, what an awesome segue. So you, so so here you are. You're doing all this all this awesome stuff. You what what made you still want to come to university? Because because oh, you were doing some cool things there. You know, it's so easy to go. Oh, I've I found my niche. I'm doing some cool stuff here. What is your driver to still go to university? Um, to me, it's the whole academic aspect of um, academic, but also knowledge, right? So I want to be able to to learn knowledge um, in a way that I get to decide how I put that into practice, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna research it, um, I'll see how I apply it. And then from there, um, you know, I will decide what what I do after that. And I find that quite powerful. Yeah. Um, and also it was my, it was something for me. Totally, yep. My outward energy was always for others, yeah. which is fine. Um, but. Uh, I'm not going to lie, shutting up some critics was also part of it as well. Um, and if I could do it in my own way, I was going to go out there and do it. So that's why um, I was determined to do my undergrad in politics and move into an MBA, uh, which you can kind of see the trajectory, right? So yeah. I went politics, wanted to learn about business sustainability um, yeah. and how white men think, to be honest, in the private sector is kind of yeah. what made me go down that way. Um, and then now going back to do a PhD, hopefully in politics. So that's um, that's that's really awesome. So I mean, I mean, it this segues really right nicely back to what we started with with Tane's comment about looking out for yourself. You know, you were giving you were giving so much to other people that the fact that you got to university was not just about you. Yeah. You were taking a break from giving to actually taking now for yourself, which is which is awesome. Yeah. But here's a question for you. Um, so you're from a Pacifica family. You you had your roots in Christchurch. You have you have your sons. You have your husband. Why did you choose to leave Christchurch and go to university elsewhere? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what had happened was quite, it was quite circumstantial, to be honest. Um, yep. I never thought I'd leave Christchurch, but because uh, myself and kids' dad had done things at quite a young age, yes. everything else had to sort of go. Of course, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like you said, it wasn't this linear, like, you know, finish, do this, do this. No, it was quite messy and all over the place. So he got a job um, at the Forsyth Bar Stadium, uh, where his background is in building. Um, okay. agent. So we moved there four years ago and um, he knew that I wouldn't go. Sounds horrible, but he knew I wouldn't leave my family. Like I've- Makes sense, yeah. So he got the job and then told me, um, <laughs> and i was like who does that you know he was like oh by the way i've got a job in. and i was like cool you got a new job and he's like in dunedin oh, you know. <laughs> like 
what is wrong with you? And, and that was the first year I worked in my first government job as oh, a wow. um, advisor yeah. in the Ministry of People. So when you did that, I, it was, I'm not going to lie, it was a bit of a, um, a clash. And yeah. it was a reminder that if there was any situation where we would, uh, as young married couple, we would clash, it'd be the career stuff. Because yeah. he's trying to come up in his own way. I'm trying to do that. And then we're both trying to be parents. Totally, yeah. Uh, and so that was an interesting part of my life that definitely had a lot of emotions, um, a lot of back and forth between both our families. Yeah. And so we made the move to go. And I haven't, I have said like, oh, I'm glad we did, but I would never tell him it was all him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just needed to be pushed out of my comfort zone because yeah. if not, I would have stuck here um, with my um, mum and brothers. And it would have, who knows what it could have been like if That's I stayed. Uh, but no, I'm glad we made it to Dunedin because I've never found myself as much um, as, as I have since being here, which yeah. is interesting um, for me, but I've definitely grown into my own, um, a lot more um, confident in, in who I am. But also when I moved to Dunedin, I had some big major health concerns that mean I went overseas for surgery. So my life has been like, um, went to Mexico for a surgery, went to America for a surgery, oh, wow. came back down. Um, to Dunedin so like you know there was a lot of things that happened uh, since moving to Dunedin. Mm. Uh, I just want to touch on something that, that you that you raised there you know um, when you came to Dunedin you found yourself. Tanya let's bring you in here you know you've been this is going to be your third year now um, how does that resonate with you coming to Dunedin and actually finding out who you are versus Tanya at, at high school? Yeah I think I totally agree with that statement because you're doing something for yourself as we've talked about and you're actually realizing what you believe in. You know, you've grown up with the people that support you. And as much as you hate to say it, you know, your parents, your family, your friends are always going to support you, even if they don't necessarily agree with what you believe in. And so when you go down to a place, you know, or just move cities, it's a complete different lifestyle. And you learn that, you know, not everybody's going to agree with what you believe in. And not everyone's going to be as passionate as the stuff that you're passionate about and that's where you really start to learn you know what you should focus on and what might not need to be focused on but also you know choosing your beliefs choosing your passions and knowing you know what you truly are passionate about because it's one thing to be interested in something and think oh yeah this is cool but it's another thing to keep driven after a year after a couple of years to go you know I'm still passionate about this and that's not changing. So sometimes passion takes time to find and, you know, things can change and you can try new things, but it's a good way to just find yourself and really know what you believe. Yeah, and I think I think um, what I can add to that is sometimes you just hide in comfort zone. You hide in your family structure. You hide, when I say, I use the word hide, but it's you're comfortable, so you don't, you're not able to express and grow in ways that you get challenged from when you actually move away from home, wherever wherever you move to. Thanks, Tanya, for that. I mean, that's that's always um, you know growth is growth happens when you when you're not comfortable, essentially. So, Melissa, you you came to Dunedin. You with your young family. You had all these surgeries happening as well, and you still did your study. So you did a BA in politics. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, in politics. Yeah. Yeah, and during your time when you're doing this, you would have seen now as an adult student, as a mum you would have seen some, some discrepancies for you in the university system, education system that would have driven you. Um, what, what passions did you find along the way? So obviously you said advocacy was one thing that you found along the way. What else did you find as you were going through your university program? Yeah, I think um, obviously making new friends through student associations, but also um, being able to connect with people and network with people uh, who I knew were going to be crucial for my growth. Yep. At you. And that's like through the Pacific Island Centre, Māori development, uh, Pacific development, yeah. um, you know, and all, all the different um, services that the uni offers. So being able to like build my um, connections in that space and knowing that it was okay to ask for help was, was a bit of a journey, but you sort of learn that you kind of, in order to be able to get the best out of your, um, all of your fees that you're paying guys, <laughs> as well as <laughs> your time at uni, you kind of need to, as uncomfortable as, as it is, put yourself out there and, and go seek those help. But in terms of in-class stuff, I think it was um, learning off other students and understanding why they think the way they do. Yeah. You know, I grew up in this role of advocacy and activism and you kind of, 
have this energy to constantly be like ready to fight. And I'm not gonna lie, I was one of those people for a while. I apologize. <laughs> I realize that that's not often the best uh, response and reactive solution. And I do apologize to the people that I have um, really gone at in the past. Um, and so there was something that um, learning why they think the way they do or their own background sort of helped me grow. Uh, but also help me be a bit more strategic, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, in, in my responses to people and, and how I include people. Yeah. Um, that's so important, even if they have a different perspective to me. Um, and if it's not harmful for the space that I'm in, I, one thing I want to make sure is, is that they at least feel that they can have access to any space that they're around. Like, I think that's important. Yeah. Shun them out, yeah. But that's just me. I, I think I think I agree with you because I think what I when I speak to young people about, about the tertiary study, I don't I just say the greatest learning will be will happen in the classroom with your peers, not the lecturer, but your peers that are around you because that's when you're gonna see people that think similar to you and it's very easy to go, yep, cool, 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 I'm right. Or as they say, the echo chamber which which supports everything you say, but also in your classroom, you're going to meet people that disagree with you in your thoughts. And it's like you said, it's how you how you address that. It's very easy to 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 put up a, a wall and, as you say, fight them and go. Not nah, my way is the right way. But if you go, actually, I want to learn of that. That's the way to go. Um, which is quite hard to do because you've got to you've got to drop your ego. Your ego has got to disappear, and you've got to go. Hey, I'm actually, I don't know everything, which is very hard for lots of people to do. You know, I, I'm I'm pretty guilty of that as well. Um, yeah, I'm the master of my own destiny, but I, I don't really care what you think, which is pretty tough. So you did that, and then um, I think what would be awesome is. So you, you're doing this year, and then um, you finish undergrad. Tell us about the MBA. What 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 made you want to carry on your study now? Because you, because you said you left your family now, you left home, crash it, and now you want to go. I'm going to sign up to more study in in Dunedin. So um, what had happened was I did the during my time at public sector. Yep. Um, I also uh, used the opportunity as a citizen of this country and did a couple of petitions. It doesn't oh, wow. look good as a public sector um, government employee, um, which was the against the under response squad trials. Um, so that was my biggest one that I'd done yeah. uh, through our action station. Um, so we got just under 30,000 signatures, uh, took the petition to parliament. Um, and at the same time, I was a government employee. So, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> and, um, I was also on the Royal Commission of Inquiry as a yeah. reference member. Um, so it was, it was a lot of, um, media trying to trying to get some story which i was really good at avoiding by saying that because i work in public sector so i really got to bounce off the different roles i had but it equally it was so tiring and emotionally draining trying to um ensure that i've covered myself completely so doing the mba was purely because i wanted to build my knowledge around business sustainability as mentioned yeah. before uh, but secondly it was because i had uh, got myself in a situation where there's a good chance that the government wouldn't hire me again <laughs> which i was you know when you have two kids to feed yeah that's the thing you have to do and um people thought it was weird that i jumped in masters of business but um that is legit that's the reason why i had to do it as well and so um through my time of, of advocacy and community uh, one thing i've learned is that while working in public sector i think they I think officials forget that the skills that I have in the public sector and the roles that they benefit from um, and in and, and, and the um, community and the voices that I bring in these roles as a government employee is the same skills that my community need as well. And so they're putting us in a position where I have to pick between being this public sector person from nine to five, Monday to Friday, or carrying my community hat all through. It's um. I get a bit emotional about it because it was a bit of traumatizing. Um, many yeah. meetings with HR, many meetings where they had to apologize after putting me through the worst, uh, oh, wow. worst situations. Um, and they, they must think I'm dumb, eh? Because, sorry, because I had a lawyer, I had a legal team, I had action station. Like I yeah. wasn't gonna risk my kids' source of opportunity. Yeah, totally. yeah, by not arming myself you know and that's yeah. it sucks that you have to think i had to go to that extent in order to just have my rights to a petition um obviously there was other layers added to it so that's the reason i ended up in the nba um and i'm so glad i did because it's quite competitive uh it's quite a corporate um and they definitely challenge your your thinking especially if you don't have a business background yeah so 
what I brought to that cohort, which I hope was beneficial for them, was just my ability to um, share the other perspectives. Yeah. But also I had to be open to their perspectives, which was completely opposite to mine. Guys, there was many times we did role plays. My group would be like to the lecturer, get her out. She won't even stick to it. So I'd be like some corporate CEO who didn't play pay annually oh. and I couldn't play it even, <laughs> even though it was just a, a, a play uh, yep. <laughs> and my group would like cut the play and be like to the lecturer like we don't want her in our group anymore yeah. you know I couldn't just do it and then eventually I learned like it's all good it's just a simulation like just yeah. get in <laughs> yeah, it's but, just yeah. a matrix yeah it's just a matrix we're in <laughs> that's pretty but but that but that that shows a testament to you know the, the key words you said before you know community and culture you know, even even in artificial role play, you couldn't let go of your community because in, even in the artificial role play, you're harming a community member by not paying them. You know, so it's it's pretty it's pretty it talks testament to, but also your growth. You go actually wait a minute, I need to learn learn from others. Um, now one of the other things that that I'm going to bring up because I know it's quite controversial, but it's it's true. It's the it's and I think we we spoke about it last time, Tane. Um, let's speak about racism and 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 racism. If you're comfortable talking about that, this is up to you. Yeah. Beautiful day. <laughs> no, happy, happy, happy to talk about that. Yeah, you know, um, we, we we live in a world where we think everything's hunky dory, and um, you know, racism is exists whether we like to um, acknowledge it or not. And we spoke about it in our last podcast, um, Tane and with Josh. Um, tell us one of the drivers. Was this one of one of the drivers for you to to do what you're doing right now? So for our listeners out there that, that don't know, and um, Melissa is. Um, the 2022 president of OUSA, which is pretty awesome for her and pretty awesome that she's going to be doing that. Was was that a driver for you to actually go, hey, I still want to do this despite the fact that I'm a, I'm a Pacifica female that's not Pakeha? Yeah. Um, look, I, I think racism is, uh, sorry, I think racism is something very passionate to me because I'm um, not saying that this happens to everyone who grows up in Christchurch, but I grew up in Christchurch and um, I'm not going to lie. There was some, some things that happened that I used to just casually like let go, you know, yeah. um, and as you grow more knowledge um, and as you learn that actually, I don't have to accept this, yeah. you tend to um, become a bit more vocal in your response and, and you react. And so uh, with this going for OUSA to being um, the Pacific Island Students Association, so we'll be as president this year, something i always share is that i was able and fortunate enough to be in different spaces and tables um that not every student of pacific descent gets to sit at and so you yeah. get to see things and you're like why does this not feel right i'm so yeah. uncomfortable and i knew it would be a disservice to myself if i didn't push beyond here um i don't at all think that my name's melissa and i'm going to be the one person that's going to and all the, the disparity for ethnic groups and Māori and Pacific, not at all. I think it's a disservice for me and, and, and my ancestors as well as my community if I don't do something from what I've seen yeah. uh, and how I felt and being in those spaces. And, and it was like policies, right? It was policies that were blatantly uh, non-inclusive, uh, non-accessible. Um, and the last thing they would say about it was that it was racist. And I was like, hold on. So if you're saying that this is supposed to be for general students, for all students, uh, but you only have accessibility, there's like a cohort of students who have English as a single language who can't access this policy. Yeah. <laughs> <It's racist. laughs> you know what I mean? And so it was yeah. things like that drove me to run, um, but also to normalize the fact that um, you got, I've talked about my life. I'm not yeah. your typical, um, uh, I'd say association um, president in the past, you know, that we've seen, uh, with the life members that we've had and so i just wanted to normalize that um and make it clear that to, to everybody that you can come from all sorts of places and if you have something that you want to share and that you want to change or you want to give like you know you can go for it um but no racism was a huge one um i think it's important to give nothing to racism and to be honest it's going to be the main agenda of my convocation speech this year which i'm glad that jacinda will be coming to you guys because i really want to like <laughs> I really wanted to to head at home like general policy, but no, it's good. I think the right people who need to be there will be there. Um, yeah. and it will be one of my biggest pushes and most talked about, which I know people won't like. They didn't like it during my presidency campaign. Yeah. And I don't think they're going to like it anytime soon. Um, but I mean, yeah. we're going from a strength-based approach, not a here to attack you, be friends. Yeah. 
I do think that uh, it's a journey for a lot of people. And so as long as you're willing to be on that journey, I'll be patient with you. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And I totally think, and I think that that's, that's, that's really, um, Stoic of you to mention that, that, you know, the, the whole racism thing is, is a journey. It's not a, you said, this is, she said thing. It's actually, okay, cool. This is, this happens. How do we, how do we change? You know, and why do we change? Explaining the why, you know, because some people don't understand the why. They go, oh, this isn't, okay, cool. You can say that. But if you look at the bigger picture, this is, this is how you can address change and, and actually change for the better. You know, um, I know, and I know in my life being an inclusive, being living in an inclusive world has changed my world dramatically and um, for the positive. And um, I mean, look at this conversation right here. Um, this, is, this is a totally inclusive conversation, I think, for the three of us, you know, three very different people. Um, so yeah, so we look forward to seeing what happens in that space there. And again, you know, this is some for our listeners out there. This is not this is not a Otago specific or a university specific thing. This is just life, you know, people out there, the world. If you look at the world media, um, it's out there. There's lots of um, vitriol, 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 bad stuff out there that, you know, that tries to marginalize people according to race, gender, color, sexual um, preferences. So it's not it's not a uniquely to need an Otago thing. It's the way the world is, and you know, um, you know, Melissa. Even though you said you 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 won't be the person that changes everything, I think every single person that does their little bit makes change somehow. You know, and I think you've got to remember that that you know you might not eat the whole elephant but if you even eat one bit of the <laughs> elephant that's where you start right <laughs> i've never heard the analogy yeah. <laughs> um i think i think you're right and and even some people don't realize as little as uh, being accountable of your own biases is a huge one yeah and totally. it's, it's intrinsic right you don't have to go around and be like i've got biases and i'm going to change that it's like you just do you boo and you just tell yourself yeah. that um actually i have been a bit ignorant with that you know? yeah and that I know what am I going to do now? So that's right. Yeah, just be like, it doesn't have to be big announcements. Like, we're not going to be racist. It's just literally <laughs> just be a better person. And I guess not being racist or realizing your biases mean that you have to. Um, what's the word? People, I've heard someone say, I feel like I have to leave a part of myself, you know, um, and uh, I feel like I have to change who I am to please uh, ethnic yeah. communities and marginalized people. Yeah, I think. It's the one thing we don't talk about as much as is that they feel a sense of loss um, yeah. and it's a loss of privilege and loss of power. But I feel like once you overcome that and realize that, oh crap, I still have my mansion and <laughs> everything else with me if I'm a better person, um, you know, you're all good. But yeah, yeah. And I, th- I, th- I think it's the opposite. You know, I think um, you're not losing, you, you're getting richer. You know, you're earning, when, you, when you go, actually, this is my bias and I didn't realize I was biased. And I acknowledge that I become you become more richer because you then open yourself to opportunities that you would previously have just been like hell no I'm not going to touch that. Um, but again, to convince, but it's not your job to convince people because convincing people doesn't happen. It's about explaining the why, you know. And again, like you said, you're not going to attack people about but why they're doing that, why they're not doing that. There, otherwise, nobody listens when you go with them, go to them with a the stick. Um. So, Melissa, so you, you're obviously going to do this pretty awesome role, I mean, this role, which is, which is coming on, and that's going to be, you know, fantastic in, in, in lots of ways of, for growth. Um, now, you, you, you're, like we said before, your pathway has not been linear at all, which is, which, is, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, because what I want you to talk about is the right, is there a right way to get to where you are? Is there such a thing as a right way? Because, you know, lots of young people that we meet along the way will say, oh, I have to do X, Y, Z along the way. And do you think that's that's what has to happen? I know I know it's not easy, but is that has your journey taught you that actually doesn't actually match which path will you, you go down? Um, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't think that we all, um, that I believed there was a right way. Yeah. You know? If you ask me this question, I'll take my kid up like, oh no, I didn't do it this way, that way, that way. The best yeah. um, but no, now that I'm here and I've gone through what I have, there's definitely no right way. There's definitely no um, systematical way that you're supposed to do it. Um, but yeah. I do believe that um, whatever way is safe, um, you feel that is best um, giving of opportunity for you take it so if it means that you do one year of study you go out and work for another year you come back and do one more year 
if it means that you went through a whole lot of uh, stuff during your student years and it took you maybe six years to get an undergrad degree, um, you know, that, that falls on you at the end of the day, you know, the, the consequences of a student loan and stuff building up, like, we, that's you, that's you who's going to pay for that. Um, so I feel like, um, you know, do your best to try and not let people who, um, who aren't going to be there in those really bad times to try and um, determine what way you should have done it, you know, or trying to determine what is the right way for you. I feel like we also have to be kinder to ourselves. Um, I wish I was kinder to myself. And if I could go back and talk to Melissa again, I'd be like, relax. Like, yeah, you got married and it's not normal at that age, but <laughs> just be nice to yourself, um, Melissa. And so that way I think it would have saved a lot of sleepless nights. Um, are you, are you nice to yourself now, Melissa? Yeah. Are you? <laughs> No, I have not known. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I yeah, yeah. I do think there isn't a, a standard way at all. Yeah. yeah. What do you think the way works for you that isn't harmful to others? Go for it. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, you know, um, the parental and the family expectation because you know, young people these days have an expectation not just from their peers but their their families. Yeah. You know, how do you how do you think about that? Reflect upon that in your in your world. Yeah. Um, the expectation, I think, the expectation for my family was pretty, pretty plaisé. Like they were, they, it's around sport, it was pretty intense. Yeah. My mom paid a lot of money for me to have the opportunities that I had. So um, I hope she's gotten over the fact that I didn't quite get it as she had hoped. Um, I'm trying to compensate that with the study at the moment. Um, but they were good. I think it was the expectations of, of um, my community. Um, yeah. And... You can kind of see that my emotions, if you've seen the Outliers documentary that I did, the Radio New Zealand one, um, where I talk about me, I uh, sort of didn't, wasn't upfront and honest about my family's um, dynamic in terms of a Muslim, Muslim kids and, and being involved quite heavily in the Muslim community simply because I didn't want my Pacific community to feel that I wasn't going to be reflective of them, or that they yep. couldn't see someone that they wanted uh, to represent them. And the emotions from that come from me wanting to meet the expectations yeah, yeah. Uh, when in fact i should have just stayed true to who i was yeah. I also know my limits and set the boundaries um which is so important and i still struggle with today um and what tani mentioned before that it's all good if you can't do everything um and i'm still learning that now and i had a bit of an incident last month <laughs> before the year ended uh, with oh. apologizing that had to be done because i overcommitted. yeah i didn't disappoint but in the end I made this job and project so much harder for people. They didn't need me and I didn't feel like they had to have me, but I felt like I had to meet the expectation that if Melissa can be the girl that goes and does interviews for newspapers, Melissa should be the girl that turns up for our community when they need me to do yeah. immunization clinics. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. I'm always in that situation where people expect me to be this in this space. So I better have the same energy. The public in that space. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know anyone who can, unless you have, you know, so many makeups of yourself. But yeah. I, I, I need to start saying that I can't do it. And actually, I'm being and then doing an injustice to them by constantly telling myself that I can be all these things to everybody. But yeah, a good friend just told me recently is that you have to kind of do your own thing first, which we kind of always hear. Yeah. Uh, before you try to help others, and I always say, yeah, that's so true. But I never believed it really. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, okay. it's okay to say no, right? It's okay to say, Melissa, the world is not going to end. And I, and I think that's, that's important because I was the same as I, I was always on my emails, always not wanting to let people down. And then I just realized, wait a minute, if I don't do this right now, is the world going to end? No. Is someone else going to do this? Someone else can cover it for me. So it's okay. It's okay. And you look after myself. But it's, it takes some time to get that realization because you want, because you're so passionate about what you're doing and passion drives you that sometimes you feel guilty by not following the passion and I know Tanya we had a chat about this earlier on today about about that and that's something that you're going to look out to this year a bit more looking after yourself yeah it's just good to you know step away and actually as we say you know have a break and the other thing is like as much as we think a lot of people are pressuring us to do these things you know at the end of the day it's your call if you don't answer a couple of messages you know they're going to be there tomorrow you're going to get to that person you're going to eventually do what you plan to do and I think it's there's so much messaging now about, you know, you need to be this by this age or otherwise you're not good enough. But the reality is, you know, you've got your whole life ahead of you. And so sometimes as much as we want to go, go, go and do more, 
it's actually better to step back and go, hang on, I haven't actually appreciated the now, you know. I look at some of the stuff I've achieved at uni and I still don't think I truly appreciate all that I've done in the last two years, you know, because I've been so motivated to, oh, what's the next step? The next oh, step. what can I do next? That you don't actually go, oh, this is awesome what I've just achieved, you know. People would be thankful that they've just achieved this. So as we say, you've got to find that balance and actually appreciate what you're doing in yourself. And that's so true. I think I think this reminds me of a saying I once read somewhere where um, we we always climbing a mountain and then you get to the peak of the mountain, you look for the next peak. And you're always, unless it's Mount Everest, but hey, we're not talking about that there. So um, you're always looking for the next peak to climb. And then you just don't take time to actually enjoy the peak that you've actually climbed yourself. And but actually, this is actually awesome. Which I think, Melissa, you've done that. I mean, you, you've, you've climbed lots of mountains in your life, you know, um, and, and it's been awesome. And I hope you've taken time to reflect back to go, actually, I've, I've done some pretty awesome things in my world. Because um, you have. Struggle with, to be honest. Um, and I think, I don't know if it's how I've been brought up, you know, you, you kind of don't do that but um you know what i have to do stuff like that where i reflect because yeah. the only time i deep reflect is when i've annoyed someone or i've not shown up for someone or i've seen yeah. someone and it's not good that i only do that when i'm in a situation where it's not comfortable or good or positive um, yeah this is the one thing that gets to me is if i do upset people uh, especially my community and stuff like oh it takes a few days for me to get over <laughs> you know i beat myself yeah. up so yeah. But that's, but that's because you said those, that's pretty important to you. Community and culture is really important to you. So, you know, those are, if you feel like you've let them down, you've let yourself down and let everyone else down. But yeah, I mean, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to appreciate the awesomeness that you have, that you have achieved and you will achieve, um, you know, because if you, let's just, if, if, if I was to tell somebody that, hey, I spoke to somebody who got married when she was 17, she has two kids, she's now um, got a degree, Finishing MBA, prospecting a PhD, and you know she's the president of this association. They'll be like, "Nah, what are you talking about? That's 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 fictional, right?" But it's not. It's real life. It is. It is real life. And you know, um, I hope those of you that are listening out there, go that you don't. You know, you don't have to tick those boxes along the way. You can lead your life and still get to where you want to go. But where you want to go can be totally different to where you think. You know, if I if I, if I said to you, Melissa, when you were eighteen years old that you can be doing an MBA, what would you say to me? No way! I'm going to be a teacher. That's what I said. Yeah, I'm be a teacher. I'm glad. I look at you. Look at you now. You're still being. You're being a teacher, but an advocate in a whole different way. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That's right. I've I never thought of it like that, to be honest. Um, and sometimes I do need to. I always remind myself, like, who am I doing these things for? You know yeah. what I mean? Um, because the last thing I ever want to do is is be like, you know, I'm here just chasing these moments. Um, yeah. I I definitely don't want to be like that, and so. And to be, and, and it's you have to be wary of that when you are in the um I don't want to be an enabler of, of some of the things that cause me to be quite distressed and stuff. totally yeah and so I'm always trying to um stop and be like hold on me saying yes to um you know being on this ministerial governance group which is something that's kept me quite a bit for me lately with people like hey we think you'd be great on this uh, ministry of thing board it's so easy to turn around and be like oh governance <laughs> It's the best form of governance for me. Actually, um, the last one I've actually had to be like, well, actually, it's not going to work for me. Yep. And the lady looked at me like, are you kidding? Who do you think <laughs> you are? Like, this is the ministry of this. Um, yeah. board. You're going to be a board of trustee. Why would you say no? But I knew that I wouldn't be able to make the monthly meetings in Wellington. I knew I wouldn't be able to do all the reading briefings before our meetings. Um, and as much as I loved that on my CV, I was like, what am I encouraging by yep. doing so um, hopefully they don't they come back and ask me later on. <laughs> hey, come and ask me later on. Um, but no, it's yeah, it's good. Oh, it's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we've been speaking for almost an hour now. Um, so normally when we when we try and wrap it up, um, Melissa, I'd love you to think about you know to our listeners out there, what are some key things you'd like to say to them as as they as they as we wrap this podcast, what's what's important for people to think about um, from your from your worldview, I guess? Mm. Um, I think it's really important for people to to run their own race. I know it's cliche, um, but it doesn't even have to be a race, guys. It could be a, just a walk, you know, um, a walk, a stop, seat at the bench here. Like you just do you in the sense that um, 
one, and it makes you happy. Two, um, it's it's what you want to do. I think that's really important. Yeah. I mean, you're not looking at other people to see whether you, how you did it is, is similar to what they did because your results and the outcome of the things that you do are not necessarily always going to be the same or, or the same at all. So that's one thing I really want to tell people is just, I always say like, you do you boo, like you just go out there and do your, your own thing, however that looks. Um, and hopefully with my story and the things that I've shared, you're seeing that I've kind of done that. Um, but you've also learned from um, some of the decisions that I've made. <laughs> Um, and I laugh about it because I do hope that people are like, oh, that's what we're not going to do. Um, yeah. The other thing I would encourage is um, growth. So um, I know a lot of people out there, we've talked about racism. We've talked about um, being able to say no, um, you know, and, and feeling okay about that. We've talked about mental health. And I think growth uh, is in all sorts of different forms and, and whatever journey you're on, I definitely encourage you to, to sit in it, even if it's uncomfortable. Um, but also be wary about the people around you throughout that journey as well. It's really important that you have people who are going to fill your basket, um, but also you'll be equally able to fill their baskets at the same time. And um, the third thing I want to say is that regardless of how big or small your actions are to the betterment of marginalized communities, especially Pacific Maori ethnic communities, refugee communities, um, you know, it's, it's not about who's doing the most, uh, who's doing the least, like it's literally just everybody doing what they can and if it's um if it is sharing a post on facebook um you know that's all good if that's all you can do that's all you can do if it's turning up to rallies or you know um marches or protests or doing petitions or, or even a submission um that's all good as well so um i definitely want to encourage people to just you know do what you can um and if you're not doing anything that's fine the time will come you don't even have to do anything so yeah, I hope that made sense. But those would be my main main ones. Yeah, I mean that's that's a great way. You know, our our, our podcast is called Bosses of Knowledge. I think you've given us three awesome pieces of knowledge, right? That to put into everyone's bosses. That you know, you said you do you boo, you do you boo. That's pretty you awesome. Do you boo, you do, yeah, you, you do you you um, you know, you you run or walk or you just do your race. Um, that's that's pretty awesome. You know, and you don't have to do anything to to do something because sometimes that'll happen later on. And I think that's that's a great way to round up the podcast. But before I before we round it off, I just want to just do a quick summary for our listeners out there. Um, the other thing is life throws curveballs, and those curveballs bring up opportunities. So, in your story, you got you got married when you were when you were young, and that presented a different life life to you. And you were in a in a rest home, and somebody vomited you, and that caused your mom to say something that you didn't expect her to say. And you're like, oh, wow, this is pretty awesome. And that changed your trajectory right there. You were sitting in the corner crying and a stranger said something that changed your trajectory right there. Your your husband got a job in Tanin, didn't tell you about that. And that changed your trajectory right there. Um, and also, you know, the fact that you were active in, in the public sector, but had to look after yourself, that changed your tra- trajectory to, to do an MBA program. So, you know, little things in life, which you don't think about actually have, have a huge impact. So to anyone listening out there, you know, those things that happen in life, you have no idea what they're going to end up doing. So um, the last the last thing that you said about growth, you know, every opportunity has opportunity for growth. And um, it's, it's easy to be down about things, which is normal, but always find, find the growth in what in those opportunities. Melissa, thank you so much for being on our podcast today. Tane, do you want to say anything as we round it off? Um, no, it's been great listening to Melissa. And I think the only other thing that I think needs to be reiterated is, you know, when we talk about change, the first person you can change is yourself. You know, I think a lot of the time we want other people to change and other people to make a difference. But it actually comes down to you first. You know, the biggest change you make is yourself. And then you can spread to other people. But first you have to be true in what you believe in if you truly want to make proper change. Awesome. And again, that segues right back to the start. You know, if, if you take your own oxygen, then you can help others. Um, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Um, we hope you've all had a fantastic start to the year. And as always, we'd like to thank you, our listeners out there, for making this podcast happen. And feel free to share it with your friends, your family, whoever you think would gain something from you. Have a bit of a laugh or whatever, really. Um, we appreciate you. Thank you, everybody. And thanks, Tane. And thanks, Melissa. Thanks. See you guys.